So this video is focused on the time after which you've become comfortable enough with building simulation models in Arena, uh, where you feel like you've captured some of the important behaviors of your system, but you would now like to get data out of those models in order for you to say, validate, for example, that your system is operating in a similar way as the real system that you're modeling, uh, or if you just want to compare two different operational scenarios. Uh, for example, you've built a simulation um, with one hypothetical scenario of how you think uh, the system should be organized for best performance, and you have another system, which is sort of a benchmark system of how things uh, already run, and you'd like to compare those two performances in a way that's statistically rigorous, and thus you need to actually get the data out. Now, there are sort of two ways to deal with this in Arena, um, and I am going to primarily cover in this video um, how to get some of that data out of the reports section that is automatically generated when you run these simulations in Arena. Before we get there, if you are not familiar with them already, you should uh, maybe separately become familiar with things like the record module, which you can find under basic process. If you drill down into record, um, then when entities flow through this module, it triggers uh, uh, Arena to uh, keep track of whatever you want it to keep track of, so user-defined things. And so I can go into the record module, I can add definitions, for example, whenever an entity goes through the record module, um, I might uh, want to increment or decrement a counter. Um, or whenever an entity uh, goes through the record module, I might want to measure the interval between the current simulation time and some attribute that has been stored on the entity. For example, you may have stored on the entity the time in which it started some earlier part of whatever process you're simulating and you'd like to measure the time between now and that time. Um, and there's a bunch of other examples here. So there's even expression um, where uh, you can then specify um, your own expression, even going through and using the expression builder to build a sort of a, a programmatic expression that is some function of the current state of the simulation environment. And you'd like to write that down. And uh, there's different places that you can end up storing them. And all of that can end up being um, viewed later, either through the reports, which I'm about to go over, or by writing out to a file, uh, which uh, I'm uh, going to at least briefly mention here um, in uh, the next minute or so. So the record module is a great way for you to, uh, to build up uh, recordings about what's going on in your system at different times through the system. You can view this as a general purpose probe that you can insert into different points of your simulation model. Now another module that uh, may be less well known to you is under the advanced process uh, menu and it is the read-write module. And if I drill down into the read-write module, um, it allows me to actually uh, read and write uh, uh, to and from files. And so I can select, for example, write to CSV output file, and I can then configure it to write out uh, rows of that output file where I specify what the columns of those rows are in this assignments group. So I can click add, and I can select what I want to write out, where other allows me to put a general purpose arena expression, whereas attribute, I'm writing out, say, an attribute of what other entity is currently flowing through this read-write module, um, and so on. And so um, you could, uh, for example, I could write out an uh, expression um, in rep, which happens to be the current replication number. And if I'm not sure, if I didn't remember that, I could have right-clicked and gone to build expression and looked under replication variables, and the current replication variable is in rep. And so I can write that out as the first column, and then maybe as the second column, I could write out um, some property of the entity that is flowing through this read-write block. For example, how long the entity took to get to this point. And so that would allow me to store out 
this info and then group them later by replication for me to run statistics. So this read write module, which by the way, if you're going to use, you have to pair it with this file data module down here where you actually need to do the work of uh, creating, opening the file. So that's where you specify uh, where the file will be saved and if you want any header rows on let's say a CSV file. So that's where you do that. So you sort of open the file here and then you use that open file in inside the read write module which is here you drag in over here. Now that's a way to get raw data out so that's a great way that if you want to use your own tool like Microsoft Excel or R or whatever you'd like um, on the raw data that's coming out of your sim. Now very often we want um, sort of quicker data that could be analyzed from right within ARENA and so um, as you might know and I'll flip over to a presentation here um, if when you, whenever you run a simulation, um, at the end of the simulation, it pops up this little box. The simulation is run to completion. Would you like to see results? And uh, you can either click yes, or if you click no, you can go over and click on the reports panel on the left-hand side. Um, and that will end up uh, giving you a whole bunch of these uh, different reports. So each report is like a document. Um, and those documents have multiple pages. Um, so uh, as an example, here is the category overview. And the category overview, um, let's maybe, I'll get rid of, uh, don't move me out of the way here. So the category overview um, is a report which tells me um, statistics taken across all replications of my simulation. And so I might have run my simulation for 15 replications. This is going to average over those replications. Now what that means is that uh, each replication will produce its own individual replication average. So let's say each replication uh, generated 100 entities and each of those entities has an average time that they spent in the system. Well so per replication we might have an average time and system for each entity and then those so then I'll have an average per replication and what the category overview is showing me is in the average of those averages. So um, so that's often where we go if we want a general overview of what's going on uh, across um, our simulated scenario. Now again you have to be careful there's these uh, you, a lot of times you click on this overview and you may not see what you want but remember each one of these things down the left hand side is like its own document and that document has multiple pages so pay attention like I'm looking at the second page of the category overview right now and I can page through it and then it's got these bookmarks which will take me to different spots on these pages but like this last bookmark may not actually get me to the last page. So if you don't see what you want and you think it should be there, make sure you page through all of these pages. So let's see what is there. So in the category overview, if I look at the entity section, it shows me these averages related to entities that have been averaged, you know, they've kind of been twice baked. They've been averaged within the replication across all entities, and then all of those averages have been averaged across the replications. So if you see here, um, under this, uh, for this person entity, I have a value added time, and the value added time is typically the time spent in services. So uh, in processes, not uh, where you're actually doing work uh, and not in queue waiting, so waiting for queues where you queue up waiting for those services. So usually those things are separated out where the queuing time goes into a waiting group and uh, the service times go into this value added group or you can manually put them somewhere else but by default it's value added time. And so what we're looking at over here is a 95% confidence interval of value added time but that confidence interval is taken across the 15 replications. So what we're looking at here is we have an average and a half width. So you can think of that as the average plus or minus the half width. Um, and, but again, it's averaged across 15 numbers. So even if each replication had 1,000 entities, this isn't being averaged across 15,000 entities. Each of those 1,000 produced one number an average for that replication, and then those 15 numbers were then used to generate this confidence interval. So, um, so it's, 
it's a little bit of a nuance, but it is an important difference. And if we look down, well, that's why we see this funny phrasing, minimum average and maximum average. We're talking about the minimum across the averages of each replication. So each replication has an average, and we're taking the minimum average. And so we can see the range of averages across the 15 replications. And then uh, because each replication knows its minimum value, and each replication knows its maximum value, this minimum and maximum actually can be viewed as the minimum and maximum across all entities across all replications. So we get the full range of values there, all summarized right here. If we go down farther, I can see a different category, waiting time. That's typically time waiting in queues, and it also has the confidence interval as well as the minimum and maximum average and then the minimum value and the maximum value. So you can see um, there, even though the minimum average across the 15 replication was waiting 200 seconds um, for uh, in the queue, um, there were, of course, some entities that didn't wait at all, and that's why this thing goes all the way down to zero. And there's all these other categories which you might decide to put time into um, as you're uh, building your simulation but uh, they all end up adding up then to total time. And uh, so this shows me the total time that each entity spends in the system. Again, this is averaged across the replications. So this, half, or this uh, confidence interval here is a confidence interval that is coming from 15 numbers, not 15,000 numbers or whatever the, that happens to be. All right. Now, also, in this entity section, I have, uh, uh, so those are just all the times, but if I scroll down a little bit farther, then I see uh, more sort of kind of count data. So I see the number of entities in, the number of entities out across the replications, and then this work in progress, which uh, is going to be the average number of entities in the system kind of at any given time. And so again, I get a confidence interval taken across 15 replications. So across the replications, um, Within each replication, there was some average number of entities that were always in the system. And, uh, and then we averaged across those. And so averaged across the replications, we see there were 21 entities in the system and with a half width of about 5. So this is 21.5 uh, plus or minus 5.5, and that's taken across the replications, and then I've got also these minimum and maximum stats over here. All right, then I can go back and I can look at the Q section. So now we're gonna we can split out the statistics not by entities but by queues. So rather than saying how long did a particular entity wait, I can ask how long did a particular queue um, cause entities to wait, or how many entities were lined up at a particular queue. And again, these averages are taken across 15 replications, not across all of the entities pooled together. So each replication um, has its own average, and these averages are taken across those averages. So it's averages of averages. It's like a twice-baked average. Uh, so we can see that things are split up across the two queues that I have in this system. And uh, so we have the top queue has its own stats for waiting time and its own stats for number of people waiting in that queue. And then I can split things out by resource. So I have two resources in this model. And, uh, and those resources, we have uh, kind of sort of, um, roughly speaking, instantaneous utilization is the fraction of time each type of resource, where the types are metal detector and security agent, um, is in use. So I see that the metal detector is not in use very much. It has a 12% utilization, although the security agent is in use quite a lot, 97%. Um, and uh, the number busy is, in this case, because there's only one of each, then those two uh, stats match, but it is the um, average number of metal detectors in use at any time and average number of security agents in use at any particular time. Where I'm saying in use is when they're actually active uh, helping people as opposed to idle waiting to be in use. All right, so um, 
again, be careful that you go through the whole report. So in this case, even though I was on the resource section, which is the last section, it went across to the fifth page. And so on the fifth page, then I see that if I'm interested in total number of seized, this is the total number of metal detector instances um, used in across the replications and the total number of security agents used across the replications. All right, now those <clears throat> stats were taken across the replications. Now you might be interested in these stats within each replication. So you can then go to categories by replication and you can find that there is a section per replication and it has subsections very similar to the category overview. And so I now can uh, pull out in stats per replication and then maybe do my own between replication statistics. So if you're familiar with the variance reduction technique of common random numbers, then I could have run a simulation with 15 replications uh, using the same random number streams as the random number streams that I used in this simulation. And ARENA allows you to do that very easily in the seeds uh, element, if you pull in the, the elements panel, which you have to attach because it's not uh, attached by default. But if you attach the elements panel, you'll find a seeds panel and you can actually manipulate the seeds. The default uh, stream in uh, Arena is stream 10, but you can basically configure the random number generators in Arena so that every replication uses the same seed for whatever stream you've configured that replication, and that works across your simulation models. And that allows us to do things like common random numbers. And so in common random numbers, I'm less interested in the averages across replications as I'm more interested in the differences <clears throat> paired between a replication of one simulation and a replication of another simulation. And so if I have two simulation models, this is my one model, I might pull out the, um, say, the average for this replication. And then in my other simulation model, I might also pull out the average for that replication. And then I could take the difference of those two averages and store that separately as a difference for replication one. And then I could do the same thing for replications two through 15. And that would then give me 15 differences. And then I could do statistics on those differences. What's the average difference? What's the confidence interval across those differences? And how does that confidence interval compare to zero? In other words, I can do a paired t-test or something like a paired t-test, like a u-test, um, in order for me to, do, to study the um, paired differences between these simulations, which typically allows me to extract small signals with fewer numbers of replications, which is why we use this common random numbers technique. Um, if you haven't gotten to common random numbers yet, that's a, again a variance reduction technique, which is a little more advanced, but is a common technique that we use in simulations, and it will often require needing these replication-specific stats. Now, uh, we can also find replication-specific stats down in these categories here, queues, resources, transfers, and user specified where it just sort of helps us if we only really care about, say, queuing, it allows us to get straight to that queuing data without having to dig through um, each of those replication data. Now, if you've used the record block to record some user-specific stat, then you'll find those under the user-specified sections, not only just down here in the user-specified section, but if you go back to the category overview or categories by replication, you should be able to find a section which includes your user-specified stats as well. All right, that is a brief overview of how to use the reports in Arena as an alternative to manually doing all of your data analysis outside of Arena. There still will be times where it makes a lot of sense to pull data out, raw data directly out, and run uh, your own stats with R or SAS or SPSS or even Excel. Uh, but in a pinch, if you just need some of these averages and these confidence intervals, then the reports is a good place to find them.